Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up, it's opening day. The boys of summer are back, and we've got some beard-fearing apps. Mm-hmm, plus 100 photos in one. And why look outside when you can look at your iPad to find out what the weather is? All that, plus the royal wedding oh, on iPad Today. So exciting. Oh. iPad Today is brought to you by Go to My PC. Think remote access to your PC or Mac is complicated? <laughs> Think again. It's easy with Go to My PC. For your free 30 day trial, visit gotomypc.com, click the Try It Free button, and enter the promo code TWIT. And by FreshBooks, the easy online invoicing service that gets you paid quickly and makes you look more professional. Get started with a free package right now at freshbooks.com. And by Slingbox, which can turn your iPad into a television. With the new iPad app from Slingbox, you can watch your home TV on your iPad anywhere you go. Check it out at Slingbox.com. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the star of our show, Lara Sane. And Leo Laporte. You can't hey, do that it with work. me. Ha <laughs> ha. Lara Sane. That was always going to be my, like, superhero during the day name. During the day, reporter Lara Sane oh, is like on it. the case. I like At it. At night, she's Wonder Lady. <laughs> Wonder Lady. Or something like that. I wonder. Yes. Hey, Sarah. How Hi, are you? Leo. I'm great. How are you? I'm mad. Why are you mad? I'm mad at Tom Merritt. You know why? Why? He took the day off. Actually, I know this because right after this show, I have to host TNT without him. Well, he's sitting at home watching baseball. It's opening day, baseball day, as we record this, March 31st. Tom didn't go to a game, though. No. You he would think that he would say, I'm taking the day off because I'm going to go watch the Giants spank the Dodgers. But no. But he's not going to Los Angeles to do that. He's just sitting around at home. He this, lives about 30 miles down the road. He's in his underwear watching a game instead of working today because it's like a national holiday. Exactly. Except it isn't. No. it's Well, it's a national holiday for those who love baseball. Wh which you and I both do. Very much so. We're I'm fans. very excited. And yeah. It's such a nice day. It's like oh. it turned summer yeah. yesterday. And now it's baseball season, and we are excited. I know baseball isn't everyone's favorite sport, and in some countries they don't care about baseball at all. But... Yeah. We do. At least to some of us, it's a pretty big deal. That's why I thought today would be a really good, a really good theme would be America's pastime apps. Yeah, which baseball. Is a, another way for to say baseball. You know, it's funny they banned the iPad at Yankee Stadium. Why? <laughs> what? I guess they thought, oh, you should be watching the game. Wait a second. But you know, if you have an iPad, they banned it. They banned it. They may have lifted the ban this season, but last season you couldn't bring an iPad to Yankee Stadium. Something. Uh, it almost sounds like they would have banned it because they didn't quite understand yeah, what it. people might have been they able to do with maybe it. Maybe somebody would throw it on the field at Derek like a Jeter. Frisbee. I yeah. hate you. Center field, take that. Take that. Yeah. So I, first gen, I don't even want it. <laughs> so, uh, that's weird. So, but I'll tell you what. Uh, take your iPad with you to the ball game, or if you're not at the ball game, if you're like Tom Merritt, you're sitting around in your underwear drinking beer. Such a jerk. The iPad is a. We're gonna. But we're gonna get him back. Don't worry. <laughs> this entire show will be at his expense. <laughs> the iPad is a great thing to take out to the ballpark, and so today we're gonna show you some great apps uh, for the iPad. It's really actually come of age this year. Let's start with the the app that's best known, which is the Major League Baseball app. They've updated it for uh, 2011. It's called At Bat 11. At, at Bat 11. And actually, it's not only that they updated it. I mean, you have to buy it each year. Well, and it's $15 that's that's, a year. That's completely fair. And that doesn't include the in-app purchase, uh, which gives you video. MLB.TV, which is $120 uh, season pass. But, however, however, this is a really, really good time to get uh, MLB at Bat 11 because for the entire month of April... Uh, they are giving the entire MLB TV any game that's not um, that's out of range, so that you couldn't watch it on your local it's television not blacked station. Out, yeah, and isn't blacked out. You can watch 
for free. So if you love the service, you're still going to have to pay $120 on May 1st, at least at this point. But if you want to watch a lot of baseball on your iPad streaming yes. live or archived, nice. by the way. We've been able to watch uh, spring training. I suppose I'm violating. Uh, this is without the permission of the commissioner or Major League Baseball. I am. But we're not demonst We're not, you know, don't look at that. <laughs> we're, we're just showing you you can these are just the highlights now this is this is part of the fifteen dollar cost it's if you want to watch a game uh that you have to add uh the the fifteen dollars and this again will be after the free trial runs out audio is always free and you know one of the things i like about the audio is you can listen to a game either the home team or the away team's announcers mm -hmm. which is kind of fun yeah, it's depending on where you are, you really may want one over the other. I mean, they've got scoreboards, they've got general news, they've got, of course, the you know the MLB uh, TV stuff is great because not only can you watch live games, I've got the choice between Brewers versus Reds, Angel versus Royals, Padres versus Cardinal. That's all happening right now. Um, but if uh, you know the Braves and Nationals game, that's in the archive. I could watch that game later on, and it's. Completely on demand where I can go love back it. 30 seconds. Just love it. It's really cool. So that, I mean, that is a feature that you just have to take advantage of just to be able to get some of that free stuff. But even if you're not watching the TV portion of it, you can follow along in a game in real time. Now, how do I get I out love of here? this. I've got, look, this is, this is, this is what you take out at the ballpark to watch the pitch. Look, there's a pitch location, 88 mile an hour, four seam fastball. This is the Cincinnati Reds and the uh, Brewers game. And it's, it's. It's really cool that you can watch the pitches it's, as they come across the plate and, like, and get that information. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a video game, but this is actually a... a uh, they did improve it, by the way, doesn't it? I think the picture's better than, it, better than it was last year. Oh, it looks really I mean, you good. You can really see the ballpark. You really, you really get a... Uh, this is information about the matchup, so you can see the pitcher and the hitter and how the hitter's done against that pitcher. Uh, it's taking a little while to load. Maybe I know. Our, yeah. know, our, our internet might be uh, might be a little. Our slower. internet has been a little crazy lately, but uh, the idea is, is that even if you're not watching any live video of a game with at bat, which is fifteen dollars, and by the way, it's fifteen dollars for the iPad and the iPhone version. Meaning separately, you, if you wanted right. both, it's going to be thirty, and that's got some people sort of upset in the App Store. There's I decided, they're giving it negative reviews, and there's but, also an Android version. I decided the iPad version is the one I wanted. It's got the best, biggest screen. It just you want to take this to the if you're not in the Bronx, you want to take this to the ballpark with you. This is the one you want. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're only going to get one, I can't imagine why you can't get past that. Can I you? cannot pick a different game. Well, I'm trying. See, it was here. okay. Hold on. <laughs> You're stuck. Shut up. She's trapped. Shut up. <laughs> now, see up at the. Okay, here there we go. You go. Here we go. There you now, go. I, now I'm in. I'm in. See, okay. So you see. There's the matchup. Saw, this is. These are the pitches. Yeah. Isn't Look it great? at that. Beautiful. You can see this, by the way, on uh, many sites, including the MLB website. Yeah, but this is not the, the only nice. way to watch a game, but it's a great way. You're at the airport. I always use airports as an example. But anywhere where you're not near a TV, you it's really care like about there. a game, you are getting your information in real time and in a visual way. So you can listen. You can watch. It's like you're there. I'm one of those geeks. Uh, when I go to a ball game, uh, I like all the information. I'm one of those geeks. Sometimes you see them at the ball game. They've got the headphones on because so, they're listening to the radio station. They're usually over 50. Thanks. Sometimes. They anyway. got sometimes they're kids. Sometimes I've done this that's my whole true. life. I that's did it as true. a kid. I had the scorebook and the and the pencil. I would buy the score sheet and I would write down every pitch and mm -hmm. every out and so forth. And I, to me, that in, in, you know, some people want to go and enjoy the sun and the and and drink a beer and just relax, and that's fine. You can go with me, and mm -hmm. I'll let you know exactly what happened the last time this guy was at bat, pitch by pitch. Because you're a stats, you're, you're I'm a, a stats statistician. junkie. I'm a stats junkie. Yeah. By the way, this wasn't in our list, but I'm going to say it anyway. The uh, If you are a stats junkie, the Complete Baseball Encyclopedia is available. It's not very pretty, but you can get all of those stats from every person who ever played in the major league. Since leagues. the beginning of baseball? Since the beginning of time. Wow. Now, I like to keep score, and that's why... Now, there are a number of scorekeeping programs. I'm going to show you the most expensive one, but I think most agree is the best, is from ESPN. It's called I Score Baseball. It, it starts at $10 just for the app, but truthfully... If you want to score Major League Baseball games, you're going to pay another $20 for the rosters of the Major League teams. Now, here's the, the advantage to this is that, that these rosters are updated daily. So if you're going to play a game, if you're going to go to a game like tonight's game, the Giants and the Dodgers, you'll have the current lineups. 
Right. So it makes it very easy. Things are always changing. Yeah. Makes it very easy to keep the game uh, record. You can do pitch by pitch. Hello. 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 Wake up. Fly. Can... Anybody home? Hello. You can do pitch by pitch. You can get all these stats after the fact. Uh, you can do all sorts of interesting things like tweet out game results. Here, if you're a league manager, you can do more. There's a Twitter cast. So let's say you have a baseball team, a softball team, a little league team, and uh, you, or a high school team, and people are following your team. As you keep score, it will automatically do what they call a Twitter cast to Twitter of the outs and of the at-bats. Uh, it will save this up to the website. You can data share with other devices. This is the most full-featured score sheet I have ever seen. I mean, it is Remarkable! Look at all the players. So Every player is, in the majors. If you here. weren't to pay an extra twenty dollars for the MLB rosters, this would still be a way that you could manage yes. all of the stats for your little league team, for yes. example. And it, and I think most agree this is the most uh, complete, comprehensive. I don't know why I can't. Here now, I, no? I'm trying to get the pitch by pitch going. Well, um, if we, oh, we'll I, let you. In. You know what? There weren't any pitches. That's probably why. Oh, We're we are just started beginning. yet. Right. So I kind of set it up wrong because I said it's the Giants at the the Dodgers at the Giants. It's the other way around. Um, I I have been scoring for a long, long time. Uh, I've done it all uh, by hand in the past. I have to say it is a lot of fun to uh, have something like this to simplify it. If you're used to you know writing in the numbers, you know the mm -hmm. four six two double play or whatever, you don't have to uh, do that here. You'll actually point if I could get it going. Do you think that there will be some purists? That, oh, yeah. I mean, similar to, I guess, doing the crossword on Sunday, that will say, this is just not for me. I need go. to have my pencil and be able to be writing yeah, things in absolutely. on my notebook and longhand. If, yeah, and it would, you'd save 30 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there's a lot to be said for that. So when the umpire says play to begin, touch play. So we're going to begin the game here. Play ball! And now we're ready to play ball. Tap the location of the pitch right here. So let's say a pitch comes in. Right there, and that was a slider. Oh, cool. And it was a strike. Uh, you can even set the speed. Look at this. This is how I'm sure they're doing it uh, for that, uh, you know, major league, uh, let's say a 95, let's say a 90 mile an hour slider. It's very precise. Yeah, it's great. You're, you know, you could show all the locations of the pitches. Um, there's, you know, you could show how the out proceeded. Mike Fontenot. To Pablo Sandoval. Now, could you be playing Eli the White audio Sand. from at bat while adding in your stats on you can, I score? I think so, yeah. Because that would be the ultimate. So now you're listening, it? and this is for the complete baseball geek. This is I cannot wait to go to a ball game oh and play gosh. with this. I'm really excited about this. So this is, but it's not cheap. Now I'll, I will show you real quickly, mm -hmm. just for completeness. There are free scorekeepers. This is a free one. It's called Game Changer uh, Scorekeeper. Um, it is. Uh, for you know, a little league or a um, a, um, a uh, oh, I have to log I don't know, in. Some sort stuff. of like a, a softball team, anything like team, that. League. This is a, this is all you need. It tells you everything you need to know here. Uh, you know, by the way, the uh, the ESPN. It's, it's it's not as pretty, but it's very similar. The ESPN um, uh, uh, app has some great. Uh, let's say we got a double there. Okay, <laughs> enable advanced feeling. Look at that. So I it's, could, it's hit, fun. your eyes are glazing over as the baseball terms continue to roll out of your mouth. Like, <laughs> baseball, it is fun. So excited. So if you were a little league, uh, you know, this is a sample game. If you're a little league uh, coach or a uh, high school coach, this is probably all you need. Even if you've got a fantasy foot, uh, fantasy baseball team and you want to just geek out privately in a in a in a deeper at, way, I love this. It even does it the, the way I would have drawn it in the scorebook. You know? Oh, neat! Isn't that great? Yeah, it's Jackson super cool. hits a double. So um, this is free, pretty nice game Very. changer scorekeeper. Uh, those are two good ways to do it. If you really, if you're, and it's it's twenty dollars for to keep up with MLB, but to yeah, it's, it's ten bucks for this just the app, and then an additional twenty bucks to get the rosters. They're automatically updated. I spent more than that some years ago with mm -hmm. I think a BlackBerry app that did the same, or a Palm app that did the same thing. This is a big improvement. You know I'm, something I'm else uh, that has dropped in price significantly. We've talked about it. In fact, we talked about it when we talked about baseball apps right before the World Series, which was, I guess, back in October, is Square Center XL used to be $5. Now it's zero. Is this zero ESPN? Dollars. 
Yeah, so this is, it's, it's now appropriately priced. This is from ESPN. This is not just for baseball. Uh, in the My Sports section, you can add a sport, NFL and MLB are there by default because, of course, they're big sports, at least in the U.S. But I've added, um, in my My Teams area, you can add all sorts of whatever teams you're interested in. I've just added the Giants. That happens to be my favorite team, but you know, I might want to follow the Padres' progress. They're usually pretty good, that sort of thing. I don't really you hate just follow the, the division, the follow the National League. Yeah. Sure. So I've got results uh, that would be applicable to my favorite team. So what's happened uh, recently, games coming up. Then there's new the news area, and this is all coming from ESPN.com. So, of course, anybody who reads the website knows that it's all sports news all the time. So there is a lot of talk about the Barry Bonds trial, for example. This is not necessarily just about the games. It's all about the culture of baseball, what's going on behind the scenes. They also have video. Now, this isn't live video of the games, but it's, for example, uh, a special on old Timmy Lincecum's, I don't know, history of pitching type of thing. Oh, see, it is that. great. I'd yeah, so that. if you just want to just geek out on some baseball for a while and you like the personalities that ESPN uh, is is on their, uh, you know, talent roster and even just kind of like, let's look at uh, some really good plays from the 2010 season type of thing. Uh, this is a really good way to just kind of get a little bit of a taste of a bunch of stuff in general. You can uh, watch the videos full screen. You can also have easy access to the uh, ESPN's mobile website if you're like, okay, I'm into this. I kind of want to to get more now that I've had a taste. And again, this it doesn't apply to just baseball, but now that we're in the baseball season, and I'm not really a basketball person, it's easy to filter out some of the, the 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 other sports that you might, you know, you either want it all or if you just want to use it for baseball, that's cool too. Of course, if you go to the Today tab, then you just get a good sense of what's going on with all those other teams, baseball and otherwise. So again, this Score Center XL, this is from ESPN, used to be five bucks. And even then I thought, this is a pretty that's good It's worth app. five bucks. Yeah. If you're really into sports. Yeah, very much so. And because you've got video, you've got audio, it's nicely done, doesn't crash, good multimedia experience, but now it's completely free. I'm not really sure why they didn't just drop it down to two ninety nine and continue making money, but for whatever reason, they wanted a lot do, of people to have it. So Do they have ads in it or? There are ads. Yeah, that's it probably It is ad-supported. So that way, you know, they get a little more money for the ads. It's exactly. nicely done. Yeah. It's, it's kind really, of, you know. It's, it's very nice. And uh, you even have a little history tab, too. So if you've been searching around and you're like, wait a second, about four videos ago, I saw something that I really <laughs> want to reference again. That comes in handy because, as you can see, there's a lot going on in this app. It's, it's nicely organized, but yeah, you see an infinity ad right here. It's nicely organized, but you could get lost. And so that history tab can come in handy as well. You know, there, there, it was hard to pick just a few baseball apps. There are hundreds of baseball apps, and we didn't even touch on the fantasy baseball apps. There's some very good ones for managing your fantasy teams. Um, if you're into fantasy sports, you probably know what the, you know, the, the best ones are. Um, I'm not, I don't do a fantasy team because I don't have time, but uh, I did play a little bit with uh, Fan Monster, and that's, that, again, not free, a little pricey, but, boy, that has everything you'd want if you're doing an ESPN or Yahoo uh, a fantasy team. The so fantasy, there's some great choices out Having there. fantasy teams is kind of like a part-time job, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you really... Every year, yeah. some of my friends will sign up, and then for the entire season, it's like, it's I, 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 I'll get yeah. back to you in a second. I'm busy. i got to yeah. work on my fantasy league But that's right why now. it's fun. I mean, it's very engaging. It's a lot of fun. Right. Uh, if, and it's, it's a like good playing way to... Farmville. Yeah. You I, have to keep yeah, your crops alive. You have alive. to keep your crops alive. <laughs> and it does. It takes a little maintenance. And that's why an iPad app is a, is a good thing to have. It makes it a lot easier for you to keep track of the stats and so forth. The iPad really was made to do these kinds of things. I cannot really wait was. to take it to a ball game. I'm yeah. so excited. Uh, the Giants ballpark, as far as we know, has not banned the iPad yet. No. In fact, so. they have Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi in there. So you can stay online can you while you're using Imagine Pac Bell banning iPads. No, that's not going to happen. The city of San Francisco <laughs> would revolt. Nobody would go to a game. It's like there's three iPads per person. I'm going to show you kind of a just real quickly a wild app that okay. is an iphone app uh -huh. um you know how people who play these games are just crazy about stats yes uh, this you can use this on the ipad but it's called fan graphs it's really it's really more designed for the iphone take this to the ballpark with you and uh you can watch uh, here's the angels royals games going on right now this is saber metrics which is the the art of stats this isn't actually a great game because it's very even, but they'll show you a graph as the game progresses of who's 
most likely to win and who's most likely to lose based on Sabre metrics. See, the Brewers really have a big advantage here, and they show where key events happen. That home run there and that home run there really put the Brewers way down. The Reds are going to have to work a lot harder to get this game back based on Sabre metrics. You get, and, and this is in a real time graph, so it's kind of fun. You can actually see uh, how the game's going in a kind of visual way. It's crazy. It's crazy. But if you're into, fa if you're a fan. Uh, this is called Fan Graphs, and as I said, it does it does run on the uh, iPad because it's a, uh, but it's an iPhone only app. Kind of a kind of a crazy way to to watch a game. Do you think there's anything as stats crazy as the game of no. baseball? No, absolutely. There's not. nothing. Not nothing even, even comes close. Nothing. Not even anything. I mean, it's, this is it's real, and it's 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 nice that it's embraced too. It's like no one goes, okay, stats weirdo. No. Why don't you just put down the iPhone and stop looking? Well, at there's the even battles uh, between sabermetrics folks and others. I'm a Bill James aficionado, so I, I like the Saber metrics. I like that. Uh, cricket maybe is bad. Somebody's telling us. Hey, that that may be true. <laughs> that may be true. Big cricket game between uh, India and Pakistan. Oh, yeah, big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, countries kind of a big rivalry. Yeah, sure. Anyway, those they could are go our boys that of one summer go well. apps. Yes, uh, and they're good ones. Good so, ones. So. You're welcome. Uh, for links to all the apps that we mentioned, you can always visit us. iPad Today is at twit.tv slash IPT. That's where you can watch all of our episodes. We're on episode 39, so there are a lot more. We keep getting uh, emails from people saying, just discovered your show. I watched 36 Yay. episodes over the weekend. It's Yay. like, really? Thank you. <laughs> How could you handle Thank it? Thank you. Well, it doesn't, go, doesn't go out of date. Uh, no, you, no, you no, know, no. Even with the iPad 1, a lot of the apps that we've talked about well, over the last... Well, and I think so many folks who have just bought iPad 2s... It's all new to you. They didn't necessarily even have an iPad sure. until a few weeks ago, so they're just getting started, so welcome. Uh, By if the you... way, tablets still banned at Yankee Stadium. <sighs> That's so weird. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. What is, what is, <laughs> That's crazy. Well, Yankees. Yeah, That's I, crazy. I'm not even gonna, don't get me started. Uh, you can subscribe to our show if you can't watch the show live. So don't worry if you miss us live because you can always watch the audio or video feed later. But if you want to watch us live, we record on Thursdays at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 1.30 Pacific. And if you have app ideas of your own, I say if, but I know you do because you email us many of them a day, and thank you for that. Shoot us an email at iPad Today at twit.tv. This portion of iTa iPad Today brought to you by our good friends at Citrix, the makers of Go to My PC. Love them. Some of you may not have tried Go to My PC. You worry. You've, you've, you've heard about the idea of remote access and thought, oh, that's kind of too complicated and new, new, new. Now that they've got that iPad app, it is easy as can be. Well, always has been. Uh, here's what you want to do. Go to the PC or Mac, doesn't matter, that you want to access remotely. Maybe your office computer, your big computer at home. Uh, open up your web browser and sign up for the free trial. It's go to mypc.com, and the offer code for this is TWIT. So click the Try It Free button and enter TWIT when they ask you, where did you hear about this? T-W-I-T. Then click Download. In I, You know, it's about a minute. It depends on your internet connection speed, but it's very quick. You will have it installed. You're done. You don't have to port forward. You don't have to do anything funny with a router. You don't have to tell IT department. You're done. It's it's online automatically and, by the way, completely securely. Now, you put it on your iPad and wherever you go or your laptop or even if it's a computer you've never used before, you just go to go to mypc.com. You log in with your username and account and you're instantly you're securely connected to that office or home computer. You could do anything you could do as if you were at that computer send and receive email run any program access any network resource you could drag and drop files from one to the other it, it it's just that's it it's that simple there's no reason not to try it it's free for 30 days so please give it a shot go to mypc.com and use the offer code twit after you click the try it free button g-o-t-o-m-y pc.com offer code twit and it, it, since you're an ipad user do try the ipad uh, version of it absolutely it with all the talk cool. of everything being in the cloud now it's like you still need to access certain computers at certain times. Well, in a way, what so it does is, is, is it puts your office computer in the cloud. It, so right. anything that's on it, you can get. Uh, it really becomes your cloud solution. Rather than going, oh, that file, yep. I left it. Yep. Nope. You don't have to, do you don't have to remember to email yourself stuff. It's so much easier. You know, Leo, Yeah. I'm not sure if you follow the goings-on at the White House. I've heard of it. It's... It's not that big, actually. When you go to Washington, <laughs> it is. It's so you small, isn't it? Expect it to be yeah. this palatial estate. No, it's a little house. No, it's not even really as big as one of the you know villas in France. But anyway, our president, President Obama, um, apparently has an iPad. 
and has gone on record to say so. We have proof. Yes. Here we go. All right. Do you have an iPad? I do have an iPad. Your own computer? I've got my own computer. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> you know. I mean, I, the, uh, what, you, Jorge, I'm the President of the United States. You think I've got a... <laughs> you think I've got a... <laughs> You think, I, you think I've got to go borrow somebody's computer? That is so funny. Hey man, can I borrow your computer? He's got a sense of humor. He does. I yeah. like it. It must be fun to say, <laughs> I'm the president of the United States. Yeah, you could, you could tell that he was like, all right. Uh, Come on, Jorge, please. Listen, I don't want to sound arrogant here, but, <laughs> but kind of important. Kind of, kind of. I'm kind of a big I'm deal. I'm kind of a big deal. It was good stuff. <laughs> I don't really know why it was being translated because Jorge seemed to know what Obama right. was saying back to him, but sometimes they. So just do it that. goes. You know, there's a, there's been a lot of talk I don't about. Believe this. You don't. No. Uh, do you know what I'm going to say? No. Well, let's see if you're right. There's been a lot of talk about iOS five yep. being delayed. Yes. Until fall. Yes. And people are bummed about that because, of course, they were hoping that we would talk about iOS 5 when the iPad 2 was announced. Right. And there was no talk of it at all. Right. And then they were hoping that it would be revealed at WWDC, which is coming up. June. And now the rumor is is that both uh, the iPhone 5, iOS 5, and the iPad 3, and yes, there will be an iPad 3 eventually, may all be kind of bundled in later this fall. Is that what you thought I was going to say? I don't believe the, the yeah the part I don't believe is the iPad three. I think that's going to be next year. You do, but I do. I think it's pretty clear now that I, we are not going to see an iPhone five in June as we usually do, and that that they'll probably just do iOS five and, and iPhone five at the same time. Do you think that? And I think it will be the fall because that's when they normally announce iPad announcements. What's what is there to say about iPods anymore? I mean, the I know that Apple hasn't finished ordering parts that would conceivably that's the, need that's to be why put into the iPhone five. So it's sort of like you figure they don't want to roll out iPhone five if they don't have or they don't want to roll out it. iOS five. They haven't ordered it. Right. So you, you, I can see why they would want to bundle the two together because. You sort of, I don't know, it's like they both need each other to come out with a bang and be really new and different. Now, uh, M.G. Siegler at TechCrunch seems to have the inside uh, track on all of this. And he said that we're, it's the fall. Yeah, he did. Uh, but that's not necessarily bad news is, as long as they're still working on some, some cool features for iOS 5. Waste control reportedly to be one of the big ones that would, of course, apply to iPhones and iPads both. And that's kind of interesting. I mean, I know Chrome is working on a lot of voice commands. Uh, well, with Android HTML5 is very tags. good. Android is... You You've know, been using voice commands. And that's the commands. competition. And I think that's why iPhone may have voice recognition. I can dictate, you know, text messages right now. Send text to Sarah Lane saying, you are correct. And then it'll just, it recognizes it and it types it. And that's the kind of thing I presume that we're talking about in iOS 5. Right. Because it is, besides being able to voice dial folks, I never really do that. There's not much capability besides taking some notes. I mean, right. voice to text and voice recognition is really not part of iOS at all at this point. No, so. you, have the, uh, you have to buy the Dragon Naturally Speaking uh, plugin. Exactly. You know, Dragon. Which people like, but yeah. it's not the same thing as it being yeah. part, of, part of the OS in general. Well, so. and, 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 of course, because Apple bought Siri which is a company that does this exact kind of dictation. I, everybody's been thinking that that's what they were up to. Then again, they bought Lala a while ago. And yeah, they what have, did they do? <laughs> they Not have, a they thing. They have yet to roll out anything. Yeah. Although that's uh, apparently is, it's on his way as well. So you never really know when Apple acquires a company. What the hell How they're long doing? they're going to sit on it before <laughs> they lay that egg. Sit on it. But it's, you know, it's interesting to watch the speculation roll out for iOS 5. In any case, when it does come out, and I think it will be the fall. I guess we're talking September. That's fall. Then uh, some updates to to our iPad 2s. Leo's saying no iPad 3 until next year. I, I think I, I would be, frankly, a little miffed if I had yes, bought an iPad 2, if an iPad 3 yeah, rolled out in September. Because we just bought our iPads. Yeah. Right. So um, I don't especially think those who... You know, just got it for the free. It's like, let us enjoy it a little bit. I'm thrilled about some improvements that I hope the iPad 3 have, cameras, anybody. But again, they would that would be a little quick. I think that that's asking a lot. One Especially of the most interesting things that's happening with the iPad 2 is this faster processor. I think the camera was one thing, but we haven't yet seen a lot of apps developed for the speed that this thing is capable for. 
you know, oh, at wow. uh, there was a, a conference. We didn't cover it, uh, at least we haven't on this show before. Photoshop World. Right. Adobe folks getting together, talking about new features of Photoshop and oh, development and all this. sorts of stuff around Photoshop. Guess what's coming to the iPad? This is Photoshop, the full thing. Not Photoshop, this the little thing. Yeah. This is the full Photoshop on the iPad. Some folks might say, well, wait, isn't there already Photoshop on the iPad? This Photoshop Express doesn't do layers. No, no, no. This very is, limited. This is completely different. The new version of Photoshop, and it's being demoed here. I don't know if the person who was taking this video was supposed to be taking it or not. It's amazing. But they're showing how layers works live, and it looks really cool. And, of course, it's a very, it's that whole iPad hands-on, being able to spin stuff with your fingers. Right. Uh, you know, you're getting rid of the mouse altogether. Yeah, it's really cool. This, now, it, this would not, entice I, me to try to pick up Photoshop on the it's iPad. It's not too much of a stretch to think of uh, this happening because, uh, after all, Photoshop goes is old enough that it predates single uh, processors of you know, 500 megahertz and less. Mm -hmm. So dual gigahertz processors with the graphics capabilities of the iPad 2 are, you know, in many ways, plenty for Photoshop. Not a lot of RAM in there, only 512 megs of RAM. I think that might be something that holds Photoshop back a little bit. Uh, but the touch interface is very interesting. A lot of people like Burt Monroy, Photoshop Wizards, uh, actually uh, do their Photoshop with uh, a Cintiq, That's which is right. a touchscreen monitor. So uh, they prefer to interact this way with their Photoshop. It seems more intuitive, too, to kind of be able to brush on and off layers and this and that. Um, <laughs> Jeremy is just doing a little video, yeah, video hey. shoot for us in here. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. So I'm excited about that. I did, am they, too. did they say when that would be available? No. I, well, I mean, they may have. Uh, nothing's been leaked out uh, well, I'd love to, to, see to us that. anyway. But I mean, coming soon, I suppose. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see that. I would love it. Yeah. Yeah, not, but I not hope by it's next not, week. Hope it's not eight hundred dollars. Me too. Well, <laughs> you know, Photoshop is what four hundred bucks if you buy $700. it. Seven hundred dollars. Seven hundred dollars. Yeah. You're kidding. It's one Alex. That's where the. Uh, that's where the Alex came from, is the cost uh -huh. of one copy wow. of Photoshop. So I, I, I don't know. I don't have Photoshop. I haven't run Photoshop on my machine for years and years, so I wasn't aware that it was that much. If it could be on the iPad... How much would you pay? 100 99 sounds really good to me. 150 I think that's getting into pricing I people think it, out. I don't think it'll be over 200 but I think it'll be 150 I don't think it'll be 100 Yeah. That's my guess. Yeah. I mean, I think Write that could, down, and then uh, when when they sell it, you tell me if I was right or wrong. If 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 they if they can sell it for one ninety nine, and it's an amazing app that people use on a daily basis, and the experts say it's worth it, people will pay. I think one ninety nine would be a mistake. I think one forty nine would be is exactly the, spot the right spot where they they're getting what I they don't deserve. Know why, and, but I and just get that feeling. People out. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see. Yeah. Uh, this week's Ask Leo comes from Hector Rivera. He lives in Puerto Rico. And he says, I, something's weird. I've got an iPad 1 with Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi iPad. I have a Linksys uh, 400N dual band router. I have it configured with the optimal configurations and band 5 gigahertz. But for whatever reason, the iPad prefers to connect to the G band at 2.4 gigahertz instead. Is there some Wi-Fi hardware setting in the iPad 1 where that's what it has to use? Or is something else going on? I don't even know how Hector can figure this out. Well, well you can tell in your... Uh, if you're looking at your... In your settings. I think... I'm not sure which version of Wi-Fi the iPad 1 used, but I bet it doesn't use N, would be my guess. That it just isn't capable, so it has a switchback setting in case it's introduced? Yeah, that, I mean, that's what the routers do, is that they, they step yeah. down to G if you can't do N. Um... Boy, that's an interesting question. Is, is anybody in the, uh, yeah, the chat room says the iPad 1 does not use 802.11n, so that's w why. There is no setting. No? Okay, now somebody's saying, no, it does have n, but doesn't have 5 gigahertz n. So it's just, just going to the, it's a uh, setting that's, that it's incapable of. For version 1, mm, that's interesting. So I guess, you know, this is one of those things. There's always questions right. <laughs> about what the capabilities of the iPad are. Apple talks about it sometimes and sometimes they keep it a big big darn secret um, and this is not something that would affect many folks they would never notice well you might and you and you certainly uh, do you think most iPad owners are paying attention to the wireless not. settings if if you have an 802.11n router you would prefer to use 802.11n on all of your devices and that's why somebody right. might notice right uh, I'm just gonna look at this if I could find the tech specs 
for the iPad. This is the iPad 2's tech specs. Let's see if they say what kind of Wi-Fi. They do not. And this is pretty typical. So we'd have to get a teardown from iFixit or somebody like that to find out what kind of... Oh, yeah, here it is. Uh, so the current one is BG or N. Does not say doesn't what frequency. Gigahertz. Doesn't yeah. say whether it's 2.4 or 5. But it does. the current one does support N. Well, uh, again, someone in the chat room said, well, it supported N, but just up to 2.4, right. not 5. So right. Hector was just, he was... The dual band routers he's setting himself out. Yeah, and, and that's that's actually good. That's fine. And no problem unless you have problems with two point four gigahertz. So good. All right. So that's the that's good news. Good. Well, Hector, it's not just you. That's the way the iPad well, works. On now, iPad now there's somebody in the chat room says, "Oh no, I can use five gigahertz." Really? <laughs> yeah. So I don't. I really. Oh boy. Oh boy. It, that's wireless setting. The only reason thing. you'd want to use five gigahertz is if you had an interference at two point four, which is a very crowded band. Mm -hmm. uh, the problem with 5, the disadvantage to 5 is it does not go through walls as well as 2.4. Yeah. So I would say if you can get it to work with 2.4 and you're not getting interference, stick with 2.4. That's right. fine. You're at least using N. Mm -hmm. I live in a busy, uh, well, a, a crowded apartment building where there's a lot of us. And so we actually use N5 because we have so much interference. Right. But at the same time, That's fairly common. our wireless um, strength is weird in certain rooms as well for that same yeah, reason. Uh, you know, I, I'm going to have to keep doing some uh, uh, research on uh, on this because now the chat room is saying, no, no, it can use 5. Hmm. So I, I think there's some debate. And unfortunately, I don't think Apple is completely forthcoming on what it does. So I don't I'll think have to they do really want us to know. You know where you go another, if, if you're trying to... to ask? They don't. Just, just they don't want to, let it go. They don't want to talk Steve. about it. The whole idea, the whole idea of the iPad is that you shouldn't have to think about stuff like that. The problem is that we, some of us still do. That's so true. iFixit.com, I'm going to check and see what they say. They tear these guys down. They do. And they look at the names of the chips, and so they can say exactly what capabilities it has. So I will search right now for iPad 1, and I'll let you know. But while, moving along. While you're doing that, uh, <laughs> Dennis wrote in and said... Listen, I know you guys don't do a lot of Today Show watching. I understand you're I very busy I love the Today people. Show. Don't, 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 don't say that. Do you watch the Today Show on a regular basis? I am so excited about the royal wedding. Oh, I know. Isn't it, isn't it magical? <laughs> We're lying. We don't have time no, to watch the you Today know, I Show. I watched the first royal wedding. The, well, it wasn't the first one, but I watched what the one. What was that, Diana, 1980, 81? Diana and Charles. And uh, Charles, it was 80. 80 uh, it was 80. 80. 80. So I was, you know, four. What? So I don't think I saw it. I wasn't interested in marriage The reason I was watching it, because I was about to get married in 1981. It was right before my really? first marriage. And, and you so wanted to get some ideas. I was looking for tips. Right. How and did actually, they do their flowers? Our marriage outlasted theirs, so. There you go. I got some good it's tips. It's good to dial it down a little bit. <laughs> uh, you know, sometimes you just don't want to go crazy with the dress and the train and the veil. Anyway, so Dennis said, listen, I was watching the Today Show, and I just couldn't help myself. I had to send in this clip of world's most ridiculous cable attached to an, an iPad and an explanation of a very ridiculous app. So here's that video. Your royal knowledge ahead of time. NBC News <laughs> is that. launching a free... What the hell? Wedding. Wait a minute. Matt Lauer's got an iPad, nice and light, and then what the this, hell? This, I mean, I, it's, it, it's like some sort of like... It's like that snake that escaped from the Bronx Zoo. <laughs> is I'm attached actually to Matt Lauer's iPad. I'm actually somewhat surprised... That, that they would they actually would allow, allow that. something so hideous. Yeah. Yeah. Got ours right here. It archives all of our coverage. Wow. So this is this is pre iPad too, of course, because cool now like they could just family tree. You use Airshare or uh, the Royal Family look, right the there. The Today Show has made the their very own the Royal, royal you can then iPad tap on them individually to talk example, about the hey, legacy of hey, the Royal Family. Don't knock it. It's going to be a bestseller. Let me go back here for. Oh, I'm sure they'll sell plenty. All the members of the Royal. But look at that. I mean, it's like it's the weirdest set. You know, we've been talking about because we're what is moving. To our new studio, I don't think we'll do well. that. Uh, no, you could now you know why. Now cable. you know why. All we do is I, there's there's no cables attached to this. I just take a picture right. of a screen. Exactly. Now, of course, they're going to put this on the Today Show and say, "Look at those guys with the big pipes Look in at the all background." Their reflections. What a bunch of amateurs. <laughs> well, I did. You know, I used to have that uh, anti-reflective coating on yeah, this thing. And, I know. Uh, well, then you got a new iPad. I got a new iPad, and I haven't put it back on again. I kind of like it without it. But you're right. Look at see that we can't. Anyway, to get a shot poor Matt Lauer, who I really like, by the way. I, I really have no problem with Matt Lauer, and I don't want to make fun of the Today Show, but he goes on to explain their iPad app and how they've put it all together. Very nice. And as he kind of goes on and on, 
Um, and this is the clip that you can find online. On um, it, we'll put it, it on our show notes. It, it becomes obvious that Matt example, doesn't Saint really Saint know how the app so store works. Thing he thing calls it the iMac store. <laughs> so it's just one of those situations where you can poke fun at those less tech fortunate than us. the iMac app store, and it will be available for the iPhone and the Android in the coming days. They even have the wrong graphic here. It says the Mac app store. Right. That's not it. No. It's an iPad app, and, am I right? And he called it the iMac store, and then he said the iPhone and the Android. It's he just said Android? Well, we'll yeah. For that, and if you, you didn't hear that? Quickly, we can get the iMac one and the Android. <laughs> <laughs> and he does mention the cable. IPad, and then really everyone laughs. It's quite convenient. <laughs> Boy, do they laugh hard on the Today Show, it's don't a hearty, they? It's a it hearty is. laugher show. <laughs> oh, Matt, the hearty. royal wedding. <laughs> anyway, so if that is something that you... Uh, it, it, you, you look at us and say, well, Sarah, 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 Sarah. Just... wait a minute, stop. Oh, not sorry. your turn. Oh. No, not... no, don't, not you. I was we're telling him to stop. We're not there yet, Paul. Just <laughs> stop. Just, just be quiet. We'll get to you. <laughs> anyway, if you think that we're awful people, then the Royal Wedding app could be yours it's... for I don't know how much money. They didn't say. It's probably it's free. It's probably free. They'll show you the route that they're going to walk, or I don't know. I want it. I got a kick out, and thank you, Dennis, by the way. I got much more of a kick out of. The Bronx Zoo snake that was apparently uh, had attached itself to Matt Lauer's iPad. Wow. You just, you, you just, that was something, sometimes you just it? gotta laugh. By the way, Leo, yeah. I'm about to um, show off. I haven't done a duh tip in a while, but something um, that I discovered last night. In fact, I said to MG, hey, come over here. I just discovered something pretty cool. And he Did was he like, Did he say duh? He w yeah. Well, and some, <sighs> it was crueler than that. But oh. it was basically, Sarah, wow, you're really the last to know, aren't you? So. <laughs> Let's say that your iPad is you. I don't know. It's it's locked, right? It's it's gone into lock mode. I don't have a password on my iPad, but I do on my iPhone, and you might have one on your iPad. If you just go ahead and let's say you're playing music or something, and yeah, you want to, yeah. uh, or a video, and you want to quickly uh, get to your controls without changing uh, anything else or going through your unlocking period, if you just double click the home screen twice, yeah. you get Oh, I your didn't know signs. that. You didn't? I actually didn't know that. Did you? Okay, so I'm not so stupid. No, that's not so stupid. Yay! Okay, good. Because I was like, wow, this is the biggest uh, tip in the world. So, for example, I'm playing an MP3 of iPad Today, episode 27, so I can just go ahead and play that, or I could switch back and forth, you know, this this is within my playlist, but you might say, oh, is it just in the native, you know, the, your videos or through iTunes? No, it actually works with Pandora too, because I, I tried it out just to see if it so worked. So that's kind of a, a version of the little player that you're seeing there, the multi Exactly, player. so this is, I mean, this is what I was always doing. I was always at least unlocking, swiping, opening up, um, uh, the iPad interface, double clicking, swiping left, and then being able to pause or go back and forth. You don't have to do that. You go ahead and lock it. Oh, lock it. And then just double click. And at least you can move through. I'm, I, I, was, I was enthralled. I had no idea you could do this. And the reason that I do these duh tips, even though they make me look um, a little foolish, is because I figure if I didn't know about it, then chances are some of you didn't know about it either. So... If you didn't, I have an it's cool. That's great. That's a good uh, tip. Thank you. I appreciate that. I have an update on the uh, iPad's Wi-Fi capability. Oh, yeah? I've done a little Do research. Tell. The iPad 1 had inside of it a Broadcom BCM4329 low-power 802.11N with Bluetooth 2.1 plus EDR and FMTX and RX chip. Mm -hmm. That's capable of 802.11N at 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. So... The iPad 1 is, in fact, capable of 802.11 and Wi-Fi at 5 gigahertz. So I'm not sure why it drops down. My suggestion to uh, our, uh, our questioner, Hector, Hector is uh, maybe try a different channel on your, on your Wi-Fi router because there may be interference. So move your Wi-Fi channel, sometimes moving it to a higher number, even mm -hmm. all the way up to 11. At least gives you bragging rights. My router goes to 11. Yeah, do some uh, router testing, Hector. Yep. Maybe but anyway, figure this out once we, and for we all. We were able to to settle that down. And, Good. Uh, th that's the actual chip in there, thanks to iFixit. For, uh, t they tore it apart, and they had the information. You know who we should also thank? Fresh books. Yeah. I love fresh books. They're Are so you fresh. Did, have you, you've, you've always had a job. Um, I've definitely freelanced in the past so where you've I would invoice folks. Yep. And I never... 
some companies want things certain ways, and you never know what kind of information you have to send them, and it's a pain in the rear. I always hated invoicing until I found FreshBooks. Because well, actually, Amber told me about it. You're a co-host on the Social Hour. That's right. You'll give that a little plug in a minute. 11 a.m. on Mondays. Or right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, and Amber, uh, of course, be, as a Canadian, loves Canadian companies. This company, FreshBooks, started in Toronto. And I remember it was 2004 when we were first doing Call for Help in Toronto. I had to invoice Rogers as I did that show. And she said, oh, you got to try FreshBooks. FreshBooks made it so easy. And not only did I invoice on time, which I never did before, I got paid even faster. That's because, first of all, you upload your logo, so it looks very professional. They get it in email, but they can also get it in paper. With Rogers, I always did uh, have them, uh, FreshBooks, print it out, put a stamp on it, and mail it for you. So it looks so professional. But this is the thing that I think made such a huge difference. There is a button on the email that says pay right now, and they can pay by PayPal, Authorize.net, First Data, PSI Gate, 11 different electronic payment services, plus check or credit card. They can even set up an automatic charge. Nice. That, I'm telling you, people, it's not that people don't want to pay you. It's that, that, that they are slow to pay because they got to get around to it. Like, you know, you were slow to invoice, perhaps. This just, this just greases the wheels of commerce. It makes it happen faster and easier. You get paid faster. And for those who don't pay right away, automated late payment reminders are really a great boon you can have them set out three reminders at any time, you know, after the uh, initial invoice. Yeah, but you invoice. don't have to be the one who's like yeah, the pest. Yeah, just automatic. Yeah. It's just automatic. I also uh, it, like how it integrates with the iPhone app. They've got one called Mini Books. So you can manage your clients, send invoices from the iPhone or the iPad. You can also do timers. If, you, if you're hourly billable, you set a timer. Now, they also have a web version of this timer. And then those uh, hours go right into the invoice automatically. Flexible, easy, impressive You'll look like a pro. You'll get your money faster. There's nothing not to love. How much would you pay for this? Well, for the first free three clients, it's absolutely free. Free for three clients. Up I mean, to 25 clients, 20 bucks a month. don't have more than three. Three is so perfect. Would have, would have done the job for me. Unlimited invoices, unlimited number of contractors. All of the features, free. Now, if you want to pay a little extra, if you want those paper invoices printed and mailed, of course, you have to pay for the postage. But this is such a great deal. I want you to try it. You will be entered into a drawing every day this month. I guess uh, starting in April, I guess they're going to do it again for a birthday cake. You don't have to even have a birthday. So all you have to do is sign up for FreshBooks. Yep, and you're in, in the drawing. In fact, I know this is true because yep, you Tom Merritt. Yeah, you read a letter Tom yesterday. Merritt signed up for FreshBooks because he had to invoice somebody. And they said, congratulations, you Tom a got cake. a cake? Well, what, here's what happened. They said, you got a cake. And he wrote back and said, listen, full disclosure, I'm the host of TNT and you're a sponsor. So... They're going to send him the cake anyway. They're going to send him... Well, I said, if we don't get that cake, Tom Merritt, I'm gonna hold that'll it be the last the... of you. Yeah, no kidding. No, the FreshBooks people, I think. I'm not, you know, I... I we got an email. I think it's okay. Paul Thurrock got an email today from a listener who got a cake. Yes. So that the cake, the cake is not a lie. Yeah. No, it, it's wonderful. Freshbooks.com. Try it out. I think you're going to, I mean, don't do it for the cake. Do it for the invoice. Right. Just, the cake is just an extra, it's, a bonus it's an extra cake. Yeah. Who doesn't like cake? Thank you, Freshbooks, for Besides supporting Besides Leo, he doesn't iPad eat cake. I don't eat cake. Kind of a weirdo. I I'll do not eat, eat cake. cake. There's cake out there in the uh, in the kitchen right now. There Did is. I eat it? No. I don't know how you do things I like ate that. lots of meatballs. Well, I guess you I, and I, I are different cake. people. That's, it's great because we can. <laughs> We're eat. Jack Spratt and his wife. You eat. You eat the cake. I'll eat the meatballs. Wonderful. Perfect. I don't want meat. I just. I want don't sugar. want cake. Great. Perfect. Uh, we got an email. From... By the way, who weighs more, you or me? <laughs> I'm getting pretty. Yeah, look yeah. At me. You I'm not couldn't weigh out. as much as I do if I'm you... buff stuff. Ooh, look at you. I know. Wow. I, I actually feel like I'm. I'm starting to look like some sort of a bodybuilder. It's weird. I don't want to be bulky. You, you don't look bulky. <laughs> Leo's like, you've got noodle arms. Yeah. Okay. No, you don't have noodle arms, but you look like a treacherous little ball of steel. But <laughs> let, me, let, me, let, me, let me feel the guns. You like them? Yeah, let me just see. Oh, hard as a rock. I know, I know. So what are you doing? By a little. Uh, I'm not really doing anything. Curls? It's just that I used to just forget about my arms. I'm like, I don't care about arms, but I don't want them to be flabby either. So I just started no. to do like... Some, a little bit of I that. Really know what little I'm cables, doing. free little, weights, little, little, uh, little, little barbells. I still can't do 20 push ups, so I can't be that strong. Those are hard. Okay. 20? That seems like a lot to me. Seems After like a lot 10, to me. I start to like... Yeah, me too. Okay, good. So it's not just me. No, I still can't do 1,000 sit ups either. <laughs> 
Uh, really quick, we got an email um, from... Oh, gosh. Now I forget. Uh, I don't know who it doesn't it is. say a name, but we talked Sorry. about it's about every day. Uh, yeah. So it said in episode 38, you talked about the app every day designed to make a video of the pictures that you take every yeah. day. And, you know, you're supposed to see how you change over time. But it can also be used to make stop action movies. In this example, oh. I'll show you how I made my first generation iPod dance. Oh, so this is done with Lex every Star. day. Sorry, Lex. <laughs> Isn't that cute? <laughs> it's kind of a silly little video, but it's like you can see That's how much fun kind of interesting. you could have. With stop motion, you can make the orange move around in the orange bowl, or... That's pr I didn't even think of that. Yeah, if you had, like, a, a friend who had had too much to drink and passed out, you could put all sorts of things all over them and make a little video. And Reminds me, I haven't done my, to, my picture It's today. time for another capture, Leo. Yeah, time gotta, for another capture. For another ca I have been doing it every day. Um, me too. It's kind of fun, actually. Some days I'm, like, straight out of the gym and I look awful and it says it's time for another capture and I've got to do it then and I'll forget Look at so some it's some still pretty short because I only have two weeks worth, but there, there it is. Yeah, it's good so stuff. I, I don't know. I mean, you know, what are we going to do? Is with the that? world really ready for a thousand uh, shot a day videos on no, YouTube? No, but I feel like we're going to outlast many of the other folks who, after forty days, we're have committed. lost interest. We are committed. We take it all the way. That's just kind of we're two hundred percent type people. Um, <laughs> do you want to finally? Uh, I'm taking a picture. Don't bother me. Okay, sorry. Maybe we could play Paul's voice. I'm sorry, voicemail. I'm busy right now. I, I have to take my picture. Don't. No don't, respect. Don't bother no me. Okay, there respect. we go. There we go. Paul's no voice. No respect. We can find. I've been. I've been holding that for a long time. Paul. Um. Paul has some issues, and he wants to talk about them. Let, let's hear uh, Paul's. Oh. Paul. He's from. Uh, he's from England. Yes. Hi Leo. Hi Sarah. It's Paul from the UK. I'm um, just giving you a quick call with regards to last week's show and the uh, discussion about streaming from. Um, iOS devices to the Apple TV and particularly um, Leo you were saying about you couldn't see what the point of streaming from the um, YouTube application on say your iPad right. or you can... iPhone to the Apple TV was because um, it's on the Apple thing TV. It already has the client built in and, yeah. and, and listening to the show yeah. I, I couldn't have agreed more oh. until uh, I tried to uh, watch some channels that I subscribe to via YouTube on my Apple TV ah. um, only to find that the, the newest videos available from the producers were not actually showing in the feed on the Apple TV, um, whereas um, in the application on my iPad and iPhone 4, they were. Oh, that's interesting. So um, the only Weird. way for me to get them up onto the big screen was to stream them from the relative device straight to the Apple TV. So um, in hindsight, it turned out to be very useful. So I just thought I'd share that with you. I uh, love the show. Keep up the good work. Thanks, bye bye. Paul. Isn't that weird? I don't know what the Apple TV application... I mean, what, what are the inconsistencies there I, that it would be dropping certain... Well, you see that, uh, you know, with people like Hulu, uh, they don't want to be on a big screen. Uh -huh. They want to be on a little screen because they feel if you're on the big screen, you'll compete with their television show. Yes. Or they may even have contractual agreements that keep them from doing that. So maybe they can put it on YouTube, but they block it on Apple TV's YouTube app. But still like with that. AirPlay now, you can just well, watch it on your so TV guess, a different guess way. how long it's going to last. Yeah. You I think, mean, I think they'll probably think, take it you, off. Uh, you think it's days are numbered? Yeah. I think that, well, I don't think the AirPlay's days are numbered, but I think what they'll do is they'll take it off the uh, iPad app. Well, Paul, thanks for pointing that out. Interesting. Had no idea. No Hadn't idea. actually how tried he, that. How did he do that, though? Because we heard him. It was like a voicemail. How do you do that? Oh, yes. Well, this is, this is kind this is of clever. It's kind of a little secret we have. Yes. There are ways that you can interact with us we on the show. We know it's secret because nobody Don't does. Don't tell anybody, though, <laughs> because it's, it, it's just one time only. I'm going to give you some very interesting information. Three ways. iPad today at twit.tv is how you can send us an email. You write something out. You send it to that address. You press send. We will read it on the other side. Well, I will because Leo doesn't read it. His I email. don't read an email. You can leave us a voicemail like Paul did. The don't number 757-504-IPAD or 4723 for people who don't like spelling out their phone numbers. That's our Google voice number. You call it. You'll hear me say like blah, 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 on the other end. When it beeps, <laughs> then you leave us a message. Then we will play your message later on. I'm going to actually take a recording of that and put that on the voicemail. <laughs> yeah. Does it really go? Well, I don't know what it is, but it's like I, I messed up and then I never redid it. I said I was going to do that last week and I haven't yet. Or 
for extra points, mm -hmm. we sometimes get videos from you, and we have some videos in our queue. We didn't, we weren't able to get to them today, but it's awesome to see you guys and to be able and to interact like with that. you. And yeah. it's nice because it's not just we're not talking to cameras. We see who the people who are watching us, so it can be a question or comment, anything you want to talk about. If you can keep it under about thirty seconds, I know that's hard to do, but it's helpful for us because we've got a lot of stuff on the show and. It's a time time sensitive show. We just can't go on and on. Um, send us a link. So upload it to Vimeo or YouTube or anywhere that you can host a video. And if you can send us a link, then we'll watch it and we will thank you. In fact, we're thanking you right now. Thanks thank you. In advance. Thanks. Yeah, thank you in advance. TIA. So you know what's cool about uh, baseball season starting? What's that? Is that if there was a game on, you could and watch it. On you your just iPad. wanted to like hold your iPad under the desk while I was squawking away. You could and maybe watch some baseball. Actually, I'm watching CNN right now. Are you? Yeah. And you know how I'm doing this? How? Look at. The, by the way, this is a great picture. This is an HD quality picture. Yeah, it looks amazing. <laughs> this is coming from my TV at home. But you're not at home. No, I no. You're this is so awesome. I am using my sling box. Oh boy. Oh boy is right. Look at this. This is DVR. I can do the DVR settings. I can set a recording. I can pull up something. Um, I can. Uh, it's pulling in the recordings right now. Sorry about that. There it is. So this is the dish. You can see there's the live video. I can do a recording TV, TV shows. I have complete control over all of this stuff thanks to the amazing. Slingbox, and this, of course, is the Sling Player mobile application on the iPad. I got to tell you, uh, it, it is just amazing. Um, here, shall I go to the Food Network? We can watch a little cooking right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Slingbox is the idea of the Slingbox is you connect this to your TV setup at home. So it's got all kinds of wild cables in the back. In fact, I should go to the Sling site. Slingbox uh, is at slingbox.com. And I'll show you the back of a sling box. You can also go to Best Buy. Uh, Amazon has it. Um, but if you go to slingbox.com, they'll tell you not only where you can see it, but they'll tell you a little bit about the technology. Uh, just, I mean, th look at this. I mean, I have complete access to SpongeBob SquarePants. You know, I can watch that right now if I want. It's as if you were on your couch going through your setting. But this is the home setting. This is right. the home setup. It's no different. It's not like you have to learn some new interface. No. And, and, uh, 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 HD quality, if you've got enough bandwidth, you can watch it on your iPod Touch with Wi-Fi on your iPhone, uh, uh, your Android phone, the iPad, of course, laptop computers, too. Slingbox is totally amazing. Uh, here's the uh, the video tour of the Slingbox, and you can... you can. People are saying, well, which one should I get? Uh, I would say get the Slingbox uh, HD, but they have various models. Mm -hmm. And you just hook it up to your TV set. You hook it up to your Internet. And then wherever you go, you could, for instance, you know how you go to a ball game and you want to see what happened, but they won't show the instant replay on the uh, on the jumbo Yeah, it drives you nuts. Pull out your uh, pull out your Wi-Fi wi iPad, and boom, you're watching. It actually works on 3G worlds. on the iPad too. Yeah, it's really cool. Or or if you're one of those people who earlier in the show said, "Ugh, baseball apps. I don't even like baseball." You can go to a baseball game with your significant other or friends, right. And watch something else entirely, right? With your sling box, yeah. As if you were home. You don't even have to participate in America's pastime if you don't want to. You get all of the pass-through connections that you would want. Uh, there are 5,000 compatible standard definition or high definition devices that work. You get complete remote control on your uh, computer, on your iPad, on your laptop, Windows or Mac. Let me show you all the different uh, connections on the back of this thing. This is so cool. This oh is the my. Pro HD. This is the one I use, and this is the one I would get if I were you. But anyway, you can check it out at slingbox.com. See, there's all the SD video, the high def video, and then there's the Ethernet that you plug it into. Uh, it is just, you can, by the way, put a USB device in there as well. Slingbox.com or Amazon uh, or uh, Best Buy. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to go back now and watch because uh, Wolf Blitzer's on. I just. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, I just, how can I you turn Wolf him. down? No, I mean, he's, he's the awesome. You have to choose between Laura and Wolf. <laughs> you know who you're going with. He, he's the awesomest. Leo? He's my favorite. This is, is it, the time of the show. Is it time? Look at that. Where'd you get that? I got it at Tech TV. I used to work there. Oh, you know where I got this? Where? Tech TV. I used to. Oh, no, this says Yale. I got the wrong one. Oh, Yale. How about this one? This is this Bard. is this is where my daughter and all my money go. Uh, you know, Bard has a very app-looking logo, don't I know, they? It looks it like, looks like you can just click it and go to college. So we're wearing for our app caps our baseball caps. That's right. In yes. fact, my cap is a little. You know, I'm kind of I kind of sling low with the. You know, I kind of do one of these things from a is baseball that, cap. Is that is that 
Did you? Is that your Tech TV baseball cap? No, I just took it off of your your hat rack. I have one of those. That's awesome. Yeah, just, I didn't even know. It was right over there. I don't know whose it was. <laughs> no, it's mine. It's not mine. That's my hat rack. I think I have one in the trunk of my car. It never really fit quite right. But anyway, so these are. I gave hats. mine. I, the, I had one for a long time. Yeah. And uh, during CES, I gave it to the guy so he would let us park in the parking lot. Oh, that nice. That was in 2001. Well. So I'm glad to know that I have. You've one got another more. hat. That's awesome. Might as well be yours now. So my app cap is. It was actually made by a friend of a twit, Trey Ratcliffe. He was just he's on a regular on mostly photo. Yeah, he was just on mostly photo, which this, is a new show on the network. If you he, ha, if you're not familiar with it, he's such a sly cove. He was on on Tuesday. He didn't mention that this was coming out on Wednesday. Yeah. So 100 cameras in one for iPad is the official name, and this is. I mean, you could say, hey, oh, gee, another uh, photo filter app. But this is oh, no, a whole new level. Now, the reason I'm cameras. showing you a really, really bad photo of me, this is bad. It's one of the front-facing cameras I took with my iPad in somewhat low light, and it looked really bad, so I just took it of my eye. Now, here are all <laughs> the options that I have. I mean, I'm just being honest. It was a bad, it's a bad photo. I look terrible. It, here are the, all the options. I can go through some effects that are already... Are they going to make this picture look good? Uh, well, they're going to make it look better. Different. Different. Better and different. Here are all of the... Uh, He's done kind a of nice like job. That Trey I've has used given this on me. the uh, on the iPhone, but he really is taking advantage of the Apple of the iPad's interface. Uh, yeah, and he's got interface. funny titles for everything: soft colors that bleed into the walls, for example. So now I'm starting to look oh, like you know what that does look better. Painting, it does, doesn't it? So these are a bunch of the presets, and I mean, I could scroll through this all day. There are so many; it's kind of overwhelming. In fact, you, know, you can do kind of like a almost a Warhol ish. It's glowy, uh, watercolor type you know, of a you thing. Did, you made or, that more interesting, I have to admit. Yeah, I did, didn't I? Yep. Now, if you want to say, if you're the kind of person who goes, I like to have a little bit more control over my photos, here's where you get fun. This is the yin and the yang section. <laughs> and what I can do in the yin section is I've got these little sliders. So you can play around a little bit, and you can see that things are changing somewhat. Same thing with yang. Now, I'm not uh, cool enough to understand exactly what's going on here, but, you know, there's sliders, there's contrast, brightness, and those sorts of things are factoring in. But here's where uh, it's even better is that there's a little uh, a dodge, you see, with a little down arrow under yin. If I click that, all of a sudden I've got oh, wow. yet that. more options. I mean, this is almost more than 100 photos in one, really, right. if you were to put all of these together. So let's say I go, let's do luminosity rather than dodge. Now, all of a sudden... We're looking luminous. Oh, cool. Look at that photo. It is awesome, That's isn't it? Neat, yeah. I mean, this doesn't even look anything like the picture that I took. It's, it actually looks like I took this picture on purpose. Made it really artsy. In the Yang section, again, overlay, you've got, you've got those options as well. So imagine, talk about stats, all the mathematical uh, variations that you could make over this picture. Now, you can take photos from your library and import them in. That makes a lot of sense. By the way, when you first download 100 Cameras in One, because it is $2.99, so it's not free, he does give you some extras. Trey does. Uh, for example, there are five really beautiful photos I love his that are automatically yep. imported into your yep. library that yep. then you can play around with. They're gorgeous, high-def photos. I know where this is from. It's from Angkor Wat. I've been there. Uh, beautiful stuff where then you can look through filters and get a sense of all the different ways that you can manipulate these photos. You can also explore through a lot of his tips. Um, he Trey, Trey is... Uh, very amazing photographer, so he's the kind of person who's got a lot of tutorials. He, he's, he's a great teacher. Yeah, he links out to his website. Really he's got, a great teacher. Yeah, so he, it's definitely worth checking out. A lot of photo apps don't give you anything like that. I mean, they okay. give you the tools to do stuff, but they don't actually help you get any better. And then, of course, you can actually take a photo from the app itself. I'm looking away from us, but I'll go ahead and use my front-facing camera. So I'm looking towards oh, us. And then just take a nice picture from within the app. Yeah, and it kind of, it's, it's got a cool little interface. Ah! And then I can take that photo and manipulate it to my heart's desire. I love 100 Cameras. Great app, brand new from Trey Ratcliffe. $3 in the App Store. Somebody photobombed your picture. <laughs> I photobombed some guy, myself. Some guy in a baseball cap. <laughs> <laughs> photobombed you there. I don't know who who's photobombing who. In yeah, that maybe picture. you're photobombing me. Who's zooming who? Yeah. Anyway, no, I'm Leo. glad we could plug that because Trey is the nicest guy in the world. He's awesome. The funniest thing is he was on mostly photo on Tuesday. He didn't even mention that his iPad version of his what uh, a app is coming out. Yeah. So uh, well worth two ninety nine. It Absolutely. should certainly be in your uh, camera bag. We were talking about baseball. My app cap is uh, you know it's pretty simple. But it's good to, to find out what your game day weather is going to be. It's called Weather Plus, and that's 
plus with a plus sign on it. There's Trey's website. It's really pretty, a really beautiful app um, that combines kind of the two different things I like in weather apps. You know, I, I used to use Weather HD because I would get this great mm -hmm. background behind it. Uh, this is the weather in Austin. Now you get appropriate weather in the background, um, but you also get a lot of detail here. Here's the five-day forecast with high and low temperatures. You get wind direction, uh, precipitation, and some beautiful images in the background. Um, I, I have to say, this is a really pretty app. You see, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. It's going to be partly cloudy on uh, Saturday, so I'm getting the partly cloudy Darn it! Image. I don't want partly cloudy. Oh, I on. want sun. Well, watch this. Here's thunder and lightning. Get ready for this one. Well, that's an Austin. Uh, that's an Austin. Huh? An Austin, yeah. That is awesome. Isn't that great? That is fun. Now, I've, I have recommended in the past a Weather Buggy Elite as being my favorite weather app on the iPad. And it's funny, this I found this on the uh, Geek Cruise that I went on to South America. Uh, one of the Geek Cruisers, who happens to work at uh, Lawrence like Berkeley Labs. I know, isn't that great? Yeah. Lawrence Berkeley Labs um, showed me this and said, well, this is the one I use. And I said, okay, you win. You have a better weather app than... I do. So this is, uh, it, I think it's uh, not very expensive. I think it's a, a buck, 99, something like that. Did I put the price in? I don't think so. Uh, but here it is. And 99 cents. 99 cents. Yeah. It's not expensive. That is so affordable. I mean, and, that's 99 pennies more than free. Yeah. So it's basically yeah. free. They've done a really nice job uh, of this. They have uh, other displays too, as you can see. Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I love yeah. the... Um, the background, isn't that nice? Yeah, yeah. just I like uh, the drama of it all. Yeah. Istanbul, look at that beautiful lawn. Yeah. Hong Kong, Let's what a Istanbul. lake. I don't know if they even have lawns, lawns like I've that. I've never seen a lawn in Istanbul. <laughs> I was there for it 10 days It has some configuration once. settings. You have, I have all the widgets on there. That's the busiest one. But you, as you saw, uh, you can have a much simpler um, layout. Um, and they have a, a bunch of uh, settings and so forth. Uh, and how often the weather is... Uh, Updated. You can even disable auto lock so that it just stays in the weather and it's not like in a sense. You gotta clock. love it. Yeah, I really like this. Very cool. Weather plus the plus sign. I we we had a solid couple app caps today. Well, you know, I was reluctant because I thought a weather app. I mean, what's you know, there's nothing special about that. Uh, people but love that. You, you need a weather app. Uh, the it doesn't, weather. Uh, it never doesn't come stops with weather. Being relevant. Yeah. And I, why not have a weather app that looks gorgeous? I uh, agree. We're gonna have a weather app. Well, Leo, we've come to the end of another episode of iPad today. It's in the yes, can. Yes, we have, Sarah. We're going to bottle it. Yes. We're going to put a cap on it. Yes. We're going to send it out to sea. Yes. And then we're going to tell Tom Merritt, you suck for That's staying right. home. But all right, I'm going to go Screw home right you, now. Screw you, Tom Merritt. And watch the Giants-Dodgers game. You should. So there you, you should. go. Uh, thanks for joining us, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you next time. On iPad today. Bye-bye. Oh. Play ball. Oh.